saludo a te al convenio Maria Veltora. Me chiame Belgimino y, nonostante la mia eredità ancestral in Italia, non parlo italiano. Thank you to Lucia and Father Zucchini for inviting me to this conference. I'm here to speak with you about a Veltorta project I've been working on with other Veltorta readers here in the United States. The project, in summary, is to provide the most up-to-date, comprehensive set of resources about the Maria Veltorta writings on the internet. It will comprise four websites, plus social media channels, electronic and print materials, and resources for developing Veltorta communities of faith. It will feature the latest in web technologies and search engine optimization with an eye toward making the writings of Maria Veltorta more widely available and understood. Once completed, it will serve as a model that we can help develop in other countries. Before I delve into the details, let me give you some background on how the Lord has inspired and led this project. I live in the Boston area with my wife, and we have four grown children, and I work from home as a web designer. I'm a relative newcomer to the Val Torta writings compared with most readers I've met, having started reading the poem of the man-god less than three years ago. I first learned about the writings about 20 years ago through a prayer group when they were occasionally mentioned, but hardly explained and never enough to pique my interest. About five years ago, my sister-in-law mentioned the books to me with enthusiasm. Respecting her opinion, she had my attention. But at the time, I had other books on my reading list. Yet, over time, she would continue to mention the writings with both gentleness and persistence. I had long held a mental block of the writings, wondering what kind of poetry could be so appealing under the title, Poem of the Man-God, and wondering what a man-god was. In time, I relented and borrowed her volume one of the poem and began to read. It did not take long for me to absorb the magnitude of what I was reading. I thought back on my life and recalled, over the years, times of wonderment, what it would have been like to live in the time of Jesus, to be able to ask him what I should do in any given situation, especially in times of personal struggle, to observe, to watch, to see how he carried himself and interacted with others was something that I longed for greatly, to hear him teach about things that I could not find in the Bible. You can imagine then what it was like to open this treasure chest of writings that did all that and more. When I read, I took my time to absorb and contemplate. And as this journey continued and my spirit elevated and my astonishment grew, I began to wonder how something like this was so little known. I started re researching and learned of the updated version the gospel has revealed to me and various articles about it, both positive and negative. I started learning of its authenticity and more about Maria Veltorta herself. I pressed on. As I was researching, I was coming across Veltorta websites of a wide variety. As a web designer, my eye, by habit, quickly scans the integrity of the design, the color scheme, branding, the content, user friendliness. And I found in a number of cases that the content itself was robust, but the presentation lacked modern appeal. And in some cases, there was no mobile design. It left me feeling that there was so much opportunity to improve how this amazing work was presented. That's when I started digging further. Maybe these sites could use some help. I did, in fact, find a note on the Australia Readers Group website that they were actually looking for help with their website. I sent an email and Catherine, the group's leader, put me in touch with Stephen Austin, who was responsible for the website. We had some email exchanges that were positive, but at some point, I think the emails were lost because the communication just fizzled out with me believing they were not quite ready to assign website design tasks to a newcomer. So I turned my attention to the Valtor Valtorta Heritage Foundation in Italy and had a similar experience. 
They listed a request for website volunteers. I acknowledged that. We had some positive exchanges. But they were in the midst of a website upgrade, and that deterred the discussions, and those also ultimately fizzled out. When that happened, I thought I would just start from scratch and think about what an ideal Veltoida website would look like. Over the next several months, I worked on developing these ideas and coupled them with the latest technologies and design standards, knowing that most people would visit the site from a mo mobile device. As the site grew into something presentable, I reached out to the Valtorta Readers Group in the United States that I had recently learned about, and I found some receptivity to my ideas. It was in the spring of 2021 when I presented my website concept to the group, and from there, we began meeting on a regular basis. I should mention that from the very beginning of this effort, I had placed the entire things in our Lord's hands. If he wanted me to pursue it, I would let him lead and do my best to follow. And he has been opening doors ever since. As we continued our work, we started finding other groups or individuals who had done their own work around Beltorta writings. And that's the beauty of this project. It's not uncommon to find others with a similar passion. And our Lord has led us to many who have either shared what they have been doing and or offered to help us. And because of this, our project has expanded quite a bit from where we started. So now let's go through what the project looks like. At a high level, there will be four different websites plus social media channels and a volunteer organization. The websites are the main part of the project, and here's how we began to bring them together. We started with a stated goal, to increase the readership of Valtorta writings by providing an online platform that is both engaging and high-performing, and by providing resources to help develop communities of Valtorta readers. After much research, we determined it best to divide our content into three different websites. The first one we're calling the Reader website. Here, we will have the complete writings of the Gospel as Revealed to Me in text format, making it available for the first time ever to the general public in a way that is authorized by the publisher. And that's very exciting. For the moment, we're, not, we're just asking for the Gospel work, not for the notebooks or the other writings. That might change, but for the initial launch, that's the plan. This site will also have information about the authenticity of the writings and about Maria Veltorta herself. So these three areas of co content represent the basis for the three sites. You'll notice in these uh, images that it shows uh, a different percentage of that content that will be on, on each website. The second website that we're calling the credibility site will focus primarily on why we can believe the Valtorta writings. It will be based in a large part on the amazing work done by Stephen Austin called Summa, an Encyclopedia of Maria Valtorta. This is a 1,500-page ebook that describes the many proofs and endorsements for the writings. It also serves as the basis for the research done for the book co-authored by Stephen Austin and Father Anthony Pilari called Maria Valtorta's Life of Christ. Uh, we are also grateful to have Steve working with us to help with this website. The third website is about Maria Valtorta herself. Understanding who she was and how she lived her life is very important and relevant to how the works were created. This website will be a combination of pictures and written text provided by the publisher. We expect there to be lots of photos, and this might be where we put some of her other writings. So these are the three main content websites we will have. One of the important factors in determining how to present the content on each, on each site was the target audience. 
We determine this by considering one's openness to private revelation. This diagram helps explain it. We believe there is a range of people who can be divided into roughly four groups, from the converted down to the hostile, as we call it. This means that those who are generally more open to private revelation will be the focus of the reader website, and for those who fall into the skeptical category, we will have the credibility website. For the hostile category, which we loosely define as those who write or make scathing commentary without having read it, we do not anticipate having any engaging content. Again, it's important to understand that the way we view these audience profiles is paramount to how we present the website information. So now let me take you into uh, a glimpse of the main website, the, the reader uh, website, and just show you what we intend it to look like. As of this recording, the website is not yet live, so I'm showing you one of our recent versions of it. It still has some sample content in it, but it nonetheless gives us an idea of what the site will look like. To begin, we have a background here that is made up of scanned pages of the actual notebooks that Maria Valtorta used in the transcribing her, her writings. Uh, on the on the home page here, we have uh, this will be a quotation box. Uh, it'll have quotes from uh, people who have endorsed the writings. It'll have information about the site itself, followed by articles and or featured writings here. Uh, down below, we'll have some spotlight boxes. This will highlight some of the content that's up in the main menu, followed by a box with this will either be uh, testimonials or some other elements to support the truthfulness of the writings. Uh, <clears throat> up, in, up in the main navigation now, we have uh, an overview. And this will just be basically information about the, about the writings themselves and why they, why they can be uh, validated, why they can be seen as truthful. Uh, who was Maria Valtorta? Why was this written? Are the writings authentic? What is the Catholic Church's position? FAQs, testimonials by reader and by readers, etc. Um, I probably should have let off by saying the name that we have for the site is, is called the Gospel of Mercy. This was taken from one of the chapters when uh, Jesus uh, used that exact phrase to describe uh, this work, so it was uh, it's something that uh, we believe help really helps um, capture the essence of the the writing, and uh, so we we have that right now slated as the title. There will also be some features. This will just be various kind of extra features to the writing. You may have seen some of them. Uh, there are maps of the gospel. There's uh, there's information about a rosary based on the Veltorta writings, information about the Shroud of Turin. We may add something about end times events and, and so forth. So this will be changing, but there will be a section on features here. There'll be a, there'll be a way to actually buy uh, the books. That'll just probably be a link back to the publisher's website. There'll be information about the organization itself. And then, then there'll be ability to just read the entire thing online. Uh, this will be uh, changing some, but essentially it will it'll it'll take us to a table of contents that'll have each of the chap chapters listed, and people will be able to navigate that way uh, and get right to the writings. So that's what I'm going to jump to now, and this is where I think we can really make a lot of um, progress for uh, putting the writings online. Uh, It'll, it'll, it'll look something like this. They'll have the chapter number and the title right at the top. There's going to be this background box that I get to uh, in a moment. And, uh, and, then, and then the actual content of the chapter will be, uh, will be written here. So however long it is, that's what it will be. We'll have uh, navigation 
before and next uh, previous chapter next chapter will appear at the top and at the bottom and uh, as i mentioned this background box is is uh, additional information of what is relevant to this particular chapter here are some samples and so we'll have what is the time frame when did this event actually happen putting on the timeline back back then what is the location of it um, how long will it take you to read uh, to read through the actual information here let me come back to uh, some really neat features that we're adding in which is uh, mouse over uh, images and so this one says the location uh, well this gets this zooms down into Nazareth to show it on a map um, this one is hovering over Galilee and sets the, even the larger uh, context of where this particular chapter is taking place. So we'll have those kind of mixed uh, throughout. And in addition, we're also going to have the ability to define terms that people may not be familiar with. And so it'll be the same idea, come across a term, and when they hover over it, it'll appear right above it. And so this view will also uh, be, uh, will look great on mobile device. We expect most of our uh, readers will be visiting the site on mobile. Uh, so we're going to take a lot of care to make sure that it's fast loading and looks good on all different uh, devices. But you can see this looks pretty nice here. Very simple top. Uh, very uh, simple uh, slide down menu, et cetera, and navigation right at the top, and, uh, and and all of that works works really well. So, yeah, the idea here is to use a color scheme that may be consistent with what people might equate to first century Palestine and help bring people back to that. The whole goal of this is to help people immerse themselves into what it might have been like. So even though these are small ways to do it, we think they're, that they're interactive and can really help um, bring people into the content. So <clears throat> that's kind of a, a quick overview of, uh, of, of the reader uh, website that we have planned. And this is the one that we'll be launching first. Hopefully by the time uh, you see this, uh, we will have it uh, we will have it live. That's our that's our goal, anyways. So, uh, hopefully, uh, this gave you enough to go on. As I mentioned, we will have three different websites, but we will unite them with some simple linking. It will look something like this, with the links appearing in the same location on each site in a consistent format. We had originally discussed having one website, but when we learned how much content we had. We opted for dividing it up, so this allows each site to have its own unique identity while remaining a click away from the others. So that re represents our plans for the main content websites with a few additional notes. Number one, each website will be hosted on a high-performing server and optimized for fast-loading pages, scalability, and mobile viewing. The overall layout of each site will use modern design standards, uh, have lots of ways to share on social media, and eventually will have multiple languages. We also have some sophisticated technologies that integrate the reader website with the publisher's main online content repository, which will also allow us to do some creative and robust advanced searches of the Valtorta writings content. So we're excited about the possibilities of these websites. That brings us to the fourth and final site, which we're calling the volunteer website. In order to build and maintain the types of websites and content we're envisioning, we will require many hands on deck. And that's what this website is for. It will not contain any content about the writings. It will describe our project in some detail listing the various types of volunteer roles we're seeking and give users an opportunity to take a short Valtorta Rita survey. Examples of the types of volunteers we're seeking include 
those who can help with research, writing, proofreading, praying, that's very important to our efforts, social media, and website updates, and more. The volunteers will be part of one of three teams, editorial, marketing, or support. And as you can see from this illustration, they all primarily support the three content websites. We are organized as a formal nonprofit organization here in the United States with tax-exempt status, and we are in the process of formalizing a board of directors and other requirements needed for that type of entity. And we have other plans and ideas in the works that we will be sharing over the coming months, but that gives you a sense of what we're doing. We're so grateful for you, the Valtorta readers, who understand the great work that our Lord has given us. We invite you to participate if you're inclined, and stay tuned for more information. We again thank Lucia and Father Zucchini for their tireless efforts to help promote the Valtorta writings, and we look forward to a continued partnership with them, and hopefully some of you in the future. God bless. Mm -hmm.